Hello, this is the first of a couple of videos on the topic of friction, and this one focuses on the simplest kind, planar friction. So planar friction is just when an object is sat on a flat plane. So what we're gonna do first before we deal with any calculations is just draw what's known as an FBD, free body diagram. So this FBD represents a block sat on a flat plane. And there's a few arrows to denote forces there. So the first one is the mass of the, uh, the object itself, which is don uh, denoted by M. The next is what's known as R, the resultant force. And the resultant force is how much the plane itself pushes back. Now, mass is typically, typically given in kilograms, so this might be five kilos, but that's not a force, that's a mass. So to calculate the force, we need to do five times 9.81, 9.81 being gravity. So we quite often will denote the force exerted by the block on the plane as mg, the mass times the gravity. And as such, because the, bl the block isn't floating up, and it isn't sinking down to the ground, it's in balance, it's in equilibrium, r must be equal to mg. So in all of these types of problems, if the block is five kilos, then R will also be equal to mg, which is five times 9.81. There's two other um, forces that we need to worry about. TR is, of, is often the uh, denotation of the tractive force. In other words, is it be, the, the amount the block is being pulled or pushed? So the force making it move. And friction itself always acts in opposite direction to the tractive force, and that's denoted by F. R. so that's a completed model free body diagram. And quite often in these questions, it'll just be a case of setting that FBD up and then replacing the various letters with the forces um, given in the question. So what we'll do next is we'll take a look at what all of these mean and the units that they're given by. So here we have all of the different variables that are important in our equations. So we've got friction measured in newtons, tractive force measured in newtons. They will balance out. If this thing isn't in motion, if it's not moving laterally, then these two must be equal. It's in the same way as the mg and the r are equal, so it's not moving up or down. If the thing sat still, the friction and the tractive force are balanced there in equilibrium. We've got the resultant force, which we've already discuss discussed, and that's um, just m times g, m being the mass in kilos, and g being the gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared on Earth. And the last piece of the equation that we haven't yet talked about is this value mu, mu, the Greek letter, and it has no units. It's just a coefficient of friction. In other words, it's a number which describes how rough or how sticky two surfaces are together. And that's an interesting point to note, is that mu is given between two surfaces. So quite often people will say, oh, Teflon's got a really low coefficient of friction. Well, that's generally true. But more specifically, the coefficient of friction between Teflon and Teflon will be different between the, uh, the coefficient of friction, say, Teflon and steel. So generally, coefficients of friction are paired, and they can be looked upon standard tables in internets and books. However, um, you'll all, you almost always find that the values for the coefficient of friction will be less than one. In other words, a decimal unit. The only times you'll get a, a value bigger than one is if it's very, very rough, something like sandpaper on sandpaper. So with all these variables now, we need a formula which links them all, and that formula is going to be that the friction is equal to mu times r. And if you're one of the people who can't yet rearrange a formula, you can rewrite this in, um, in one of the easy to remember triangles to help you rearrange it, and you'll just have friction mu and r. So if you haven't used one of these before, if I wanted to find out the coefficient of friction, given the friction and the resultant force, I'd just cover that up and I'd have the frictional force divided by the reaction force or the resultant force. Simple as that. So what I'm gonna do now is rub this off and then we'll do a couple of examples. Okay, so I've set up a um, free body diagram and a couple of formulas. So the first one is the friction equals mu times R, coefficient of friction times reaction force. We've discussed that already. You may or may not have already seen F equals MA, Newton's second law. And that says that given, for a given force, uh, we can calculate the acceleration for a given mass. 
So we'll come on to that at the end of this equation because generally if you've got an imbalance of forces, so if the tractive force is greater than the frictional force, then there'll be an applied force in one direction, the thing will accelerate. And we can use Newton's second law to work out how fast this thing accelerates. But first, let's just do a quick example. We're gonna have a block that is 10 kilos, which means the force exerted onto the earth, onto the plane of surface is 10 times gravity or 10 times 9.81, which means that R is equal to 10 times 9.81. And you can tell why I've used 10, because it's nice and easy to calculate. So we're going to say that this is a pair of materials that have a coefficient of friction of 0.5. And remember, coefficient of friction has no units. So the question might be, what is the frictional force? What is the, the amount of force that needs to be exerted onto this block to have it overcome friction and to start accelerating? So to do that, we just state that friction equals mu times r. We need to plug in our values. So in this case, friction is gonna be equal to 0 0.5 times reaction force, which is 98. 1. So half of 98.1 should be 49.05 newtons. That's the frictional force. That is the amount of force that is needed to be overcome for this thing to start moving. So let's update our free body diagram. So the frictional force in this case is 49.05 newtons. We've worked out the, the reaction force is 98.1 newtons. And I'm going to introduce an extra part of this question. It's going to say, let's say that there's a tractive force here of 100 newtons. And the question then might say, how fast does this block accelerate? So to do that, we're going to use Newton's second law. So Newton's second law says that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So in our case, we've got a force of 100 newtons, attractive force, being retarded, being slowed by the frictional force, so minus 49.05 is equal to the mass of the block, not the force, the mass of the block, which in this case was 10 kilos, times an unknown acceleration. So in our case, we want to find out what is that acceleration. So let's process that. 100 minus 49.05 is 50.95. So the net force pushing this to the right is 50.95. That is equal to 10a. Now if you can rearrange your formula, this should be pretty simple. Just divide both sides by 10. However, if you do struggle with that, then you can always use the little um, triangle, the formula triangle. So we were trying to find the acceleration, so that would be force divided by mass. Force being 50.95, mass being 10, and we get the same result. So there we have it, calculating planar friction. We've looked at all the different parts. We've got tractive and frictional force. Those two must balance out if the thing isn't moving. We've got the reaction force and the force due to gravity. Remember, gravity is 9.81. And we've also looked at Newton's second law, F equals MA. So if you're one of my students, there'll be a worksheet where you can uh, have a play around and have an experiment. There's also an experiment coming up where you'll physically test out some uh, coefficients of friction. However, if you're watching on YouTube, then you might want to watch the next video in the series where we're going to look at friction on an inclined plane.